you. Um, I'd like to first, I'd like to thank the organizers, uh, Jay Subro, for a nice invitation to this uh, stimulating workshop. I already have enjoyed many stimulating discussions. And also, this is my first visit to Bangalore. Uh, I had been to Mumbai once, so this is my second visit to India. Uh, yeah, this is also a nice place, nice weather, great uh, facilities. So uh, today I would like to talk about uh, SU4 symmetry in some particular material, uh, alpha zirconium chloride and uh, spin orbital fluids. So, yeah, this work was done in collaboration with uh, Masahiko Yamada, my PhD student, and Joji Jackery in Institute Out. Actually, uh, Masahiko is the main driver of this work. Uh, so basically, I came here just to advertise. But anyway, uh, this paper is published uh, recently in PRL. And, uh, so you can find this paper on ACTIS if you are interested in more detail. Okay. So, um, I think for this audience, uh, I don't have to explain this, but uh, maybe start from very basics anyway. So uh, we, we have been interested in quantum spin digits for a long time. Uh, there are already many talks in this uh, workshop. And uh, basically the idea is to destroy uh, long range order, which usually happens in the ground state at very low temperature by quantum fluctuation. And uh, if you are old enough, like me, uh, we remember the times uh, just after high TC, discovery of high TC, there is a proposal basically by uh, Phil Anderson that uh, this high TC superconductivity may be a result of doping a kind of spin digit. And uh, initially, uh, it was kind of conjectured that uh, if you just consider a spin one half, a Heisenberg anti feminine on square lattice, then spin one half is supposed to have very strong uh, quantum fluctuation. So maybe uh, even for square lattice Heisenberg anti feminine spin one half is enough to destroy uh, long range order. So maybe this system is spin digit. And if you dope this system, you might get high TC superconductivity. But uh, it turned out quickly, rather quickly, that. Uh, uh, just a standard uh, square lattice antifeminine on uh, even with spin one half has long range order. So that means that the uh, uh, quantum fluctuation of spin one half, even though it's strong, alone is not enough to uh, realize quantum series. Whereas, as you know, uh, if we go to one dimension, then basically for any uh, number or any value of spin quantum number, uh, ground state is kind of spin digit, at least without uh, long range order. But if you go to two dimensions or higher, then we need some other ingredient, uh, not just a small number of uh, small quantum, small spin quantum number to destroy uh, long range order to realize uh, quantum spin digit. So, um, since then, uh, there has been many, there have been many proposals. Now, one of the uh, popular approach is, of course, based on geometric frustration. Uh, if you consider triangularities or cacomularities or pyrochlora, and uh, if you put anti interaction between nearest neighbors, then this is, of course, geometrically frustrated. So this can be a stage for realizing quantum speeding. Although actually confirming this is not so trivial. Um, but anyway, uh, within this uh, kind of idea, if you consider a bipartite lattice, like a square or a Hadicam lattice, then these lattices are not geometrically frustrated. So within this approach, you cannot realize a spin digit on these lattices. But recently, there is another uh, uh, very uh, interesting approach that is by so-called exchange frustration. Uh, this is famously, famously realized in so-called Kitai Hanikam model. So he considered spin model on Hanikam lattice. 
And uh, as I mentioned, uh, this lattice itself is so-called unfrustrated lattice. But uh, he considered a uh, uh, spin model with strange interaction, uh, basically Ising type interaction along one particular axis. But uh, this uh, axis is different for different direction of points. And, uh, I don't know exactly how he came to consider this kind of model, very strange model. But uh, uh, as you know, uh, now this is kind of realized in several material. And uh, I think this is kind of uh, interpretation which was given later, but uh, we can understand uh, the spin digit uh, realizing this type of model as a result of exchange frustration. Because uh, along each point, this interaction tries to uh, align the spins parallel to axis, but along different axes. So there is a kind of frustration among uh, different uh, interaction um, along the different directions of on the bond. So this is kind of this kind of interpretation. Um, of course, we should ask uh, whether this is stable against uh, various perturbations. Uh, which exists in realistic model. But uh, today I'm not going into details of this uh, model. But um, instead, I want to discuss yet another possible approach to realize quantum speedy. That is just by enlarging the symmetry. So usually, when we consider spin system, then spins are representation of SU2. But uh, at least mathematically, we can consider generalization of symmetry from SU2 to SUN. And uh, write down some spin Hamiltonian, which has SUN symmetry. Then if your spin model has SUN symmetry, then suppose you start from some long range order state. Then for higher symmetry, uh, there are more possible direction for fluctuation. So you can say there, there will be more number of number Goldstone bosons in symmetric broken state. So roughly speaking, this means that uh, you have stronger fluctuation. So there is a chance that uh, these stronger fluctuations kill the long range order, even when uh, long range order is present in case of SU2 symmetry. So in fact, uh, there have been many, many papers on SU2 uh, spin models. And um, I think initially, this uh, theoretical investigation was started to, as a kind of mathematical trick to study SU2 because uh, using SUN spin, you can consider large N limit, you can do one over N expansion and so on. But uh, interestingly, many SUN spin models support a uh, kind of quantum spin digit. And uh, sometimes uh, the spin digit state is lost when n is too small. And, uh, again, I'm not today. I'm not going into details of all those uh, bunch of papers. But the uh, basic idea is that uh, you may realize uh, some kind of spin digit state by just by enlarging the symmetry. That sounds good. But of course, uh, the question for physics is uh, how to realize such SUN spin systems. You can write down the SUN symmetric Hamiltonian, but the question I want to ask today is how to realize such model. And in fact, recently there is an interesting approach to this direction that is by using code atoms. And the code atoms have uh, nuclear spin degrees of freedom. And uh, sometimes, uh, for example, this ethereum atom has a uh, six uh, nuclear spin state, and uh, they interact almost uh, uh, in equivalent way, which means that the interaction is uh, uh, very SU6 symmetric. So in principle, you can build SU6 spin system uh, using this ethereum atom. But in order to observe uh, this kind of spin digit state, you have to go to really low temperature. And uh, in my understanding, uh, we are still far from uh, low temperature sufficient to realize uh, spin digit state in this kind of code atom system. So um, we want to maybe realize this SUN spin system in magnetic system. That's the question.
question I want to discuss today. And in fact, this question also has been discussed uh, in the past. And uh, so basic idea is like follows. So for example, SU4 symmetry might be realized in a magnetic system or electron system using a orbital degree of freedom. So for example, suppose each atom has two degenerate orbitals and uh, your electron can occupy one of those orb orbitals. And uh, then each electron also has spin up or down. So in total, uh, there are four states, two by two equals to four. Four states uh, per atom, which your electron can take. So these four states may form a fundamental representation of SU4. So in principle, you can build SU4 symmetric Hamiltonian using these uh, four states per atom. And of course, the question uh, or problem is, uh, in principle, you can realize SU4 symmetric Hamiltonian, but uh, of course, there is no particular reason for the Hamiltonian to be SU4 symmetric. So if you give some random material, and then the chances are uh, your Hamiltonian is not SU4 symmetric because there is no particular reason to be. Uh, in particular, this orbital degree of freedom and the spin degree of freedom are very different in nature. So there is no guarantee or no reason to expect that, that there is a symmetry mixing this spin and uh, orbital degree of freedom. And uh, in fact, uh, there is an interesting example in the past uh, which shows the difficulty uh, of realizing uh, such SU4 symmetric uh, Hamiltonian. So this is uh, maybe science paper from 2012, uh, basically from my colleague in ISSP, uh, Satoru Nakatsuji's group and his collaborators. And, uh, they found uh, this material, barium kappa antimony oxide, which they often abbreviate as BCSO. And uh, this is a honeycomb-based lattice uh, system, and the kappa is sitting on the vertex, vertices of this honeycomb lattice. But actually, precisely speaking, it's not quite honeycomb lattice. It has some decoration over honeycomb lattice, but uh, let me not go into detail. And uh, in this material, there is no Yantera distortion, as discussed in some different material in this uh, workshop area. Um, so as a result, uh, this kappa ion has uh, two degenerate orbitals and uh, two spin states. So in principle, you can have uh, four states per kappa ion. And uh, okay, so in fact, uh, in this paper, this is experimental paper, they found uh, no ordering down to very low temperature. So they concluded that uh, this material may be realizing some kind of quantum spin ligate state, although the exact nature of this spin ligate was not clarified in this experimental paper. So soon after this experimental discovery, uh, there was a theory paper by uh, these people, Frederick Miller and his collaborator. So they proposed exactly like what I suggested uh, as a general scenario, that is uh, this four states per kappa ion in this material, thanks to this orbital degeneracy because of the lack of Yantera distortion, uh, forms a fundamental representation of SU4. And uh, they assume that uh, the Hamiltonian for this material is uh, SU4 symmetric, at least in approximate way. Uh, then uh, they modeled this material in terms of SU4 Heisenberg model, anti feminine Heisenberg model on Heinekamera. And uh, then they studied this Hamiltonian using numerical simulation and so on, and then concluded that uh, this, uh, at least this Hamiltonian has spin digit ground state, or maybe I should better say spin orbital digit because this SU4 involves both uh, spin and orbital degrees of freedom. And uh, so that was very interesting proposal. Actually, I'm going to come back to this paper later. But uh, the problem is, as I said, uh, in this paper, they basically assume that uh, the material has SU4 symmetry, at least approximately. 
but uh, there is no guarantee that uh, it does have uh, SU4 symmetry. So actually, one of the authors, uh, Frederick Miller, later came back to this question, and uh, with uh, Andrew Smeraud, uh, they tried to derive uh, effective Hamiltonian for this material, starting from microscopic model. And then this is what they got. And, uh, of course, this is complicated, so you don't have to follow every time. But the point is that uh, this Hamiltonian is indeed very complicated and uh, in general breaks SU4 symmetry. So there are several parameters like T, T prime, and J. And uh, basically they found that uh, this model is SU4 symmetric only when T goes to T prime and J goes to zero in this uh, more general Hamiltonian. And uh, in this special case, this Hamiltonian is reduced to this home. And uh, this model, maybe some of you are familiar with, that is uh, uh, something called Kugel Komsky model, exactly at SU4 point. So in this representation, it might not look like a SU4 symmetric, but uh, indeed, uh, this is SU4 symmetric. But the uh, question is then uh, whether this condition is satisfied in real material. And uh, this is what they found. So they also draw some phase diagram using numerical calculation. Uh, anyway, uh, this is J axis, and uh, this axis T over T prime. So that means that the SU4 symmetry um, is present at this corner of phase diagram, T equals to T prime and J equals to zero. But uh, what they found as an actual parameter value for this particular material, BCSO, was actually here, which is not quite close to SU4 symmetry. So it turned out that uh, SU4 symmetry is not there in this material, even approximately. But uh, as I said, uh, this is not surprising because uh, spin and orbit, orbital degree of freedom was not equivalent in the beginning. They, they are very different uh, physical degree of freedom. So we don't expect SU4 symmetry. And the moreover, because of the spin orbital, orbit coupling, uh, we should expect even SU2 subgroup is broken. So actual model is far from SU4. So in principle, you can try to fine tune uh, some model to, towards SU4 symmetric point, but in practice, it would be difficult. So we should consider something uh, different. And uh, in fact, what I want to claim today is that uh, this material, alpha zirconium chloride, uh, has, we, we expect this mod material or maybe similar related material to have emergent SU4 symmetry, uh, actually in the limit of strong spin orbit coupling. Um, that's in some sense surprising. And uh, in fact, as I will explain, this material has some honeycomb lattice structure. So according to our analysis, uh, this material might realize uh, SU4 Heisenberg antiferronic on honeycomb lattice, um, which is exactly the model studied by this paper, although they were motivated by different material. But uh, that material turned out to be non-SU4 symmetric, but uh, we Instead, we propose that uh, this material may be a realization of this uh, model. And uh, according to this paper, uh, this model realizes uh, uh, gapless quantum spin digit or quantum spin orbital digit. So we propose that uh, this material would be a candidate to realize uh, this kind of SU4 symmetric gapless uh, quantum spin orbital digit. Okay, that's a claim, and uh, I want to. Now I'm going to explain why we think that way. So this is a crystal structure of alpha zirconium chloride, uh, just one uh, slice. But uh, this zirconium ions are forming the honeycomb lattice. And uh, actually, this structure is very similar to now famous ruthenium chloride, which is known as a uh, candidate to realize uh, KTF spin -digit. But the uh, difference, of course, is the electron configuration between zirconium and ruthenium atoms. And uh, in case of zirconium 3 plus ion, uh, the electron configuration is like that. So basically, we have just one uh, 4D electrons. And uh, so we have 4D orbitals, 
And uh, of course, there are five D orbitals to begin with. But because of the crystal field splitting, we have uh, three T2G orbital and uh, two EG orbitals. But because we have only one electron, we can focus on this T2G orbitals. Then uh, we introduce spin orbit coupling. Then this, uh, so there are three orbitals, but uh, there are two spin states. So in total, uh, there are four, uh, sorry, six states. And uh, these six states are split into uh, four states and uh, two states. And uh, this lower energy level, uh, four states form uh, uh, effective J equals to three half uh, quartets. And uh, because we have just one 4D electron, we put this one electron to one of these four orbitals. So that means that uh, each zirconium uh, ion has four states, which might form fundamental representation of uh, SU4. And uh, so this diagram is very similar to ruthenium, but uh, the difference is in the number of 4D electrons. But uh, already we have included spin orbit coupling, and uh, this picture is varied in the limit of spin orbit coupling. So we should expect breaking of SU2, let alone uh, SU4. But uh, I will argue that uh, somehow SU4 is kind of bigger word. So um, first we want to derive e effective uh, tight binding model for this zirconium chloride. And uh, so each zirconium has D orbitals, and uh, we only consider this J effective equals to three half quartet. So we, we need to project onto this quartet state. But uh, first we start from uh, three T2G orbitals, that is DYZ and DZX and DXY. And uh, because the uh, hopping of electron between nearest neighbor, nearest uh, zirconium ions uh, happens along certain spatial direction. There is a very str strong selection rule um, on the uh, hopping between neighboring orbitals. So most of the matrix element actually vanish because of the symmetry. So you are allowed to hop only between some specific orbital. Uh, for example, uh, uh, this is a bond type A uh, along certain direction. And uh, along this direction, you can hop only between B orbital and C orbital, where B and C refers to D, Z, X, and D, X. And uh, likewise, uh, for each uh, direction of bond, uh, hopping can on only occur between certain specific set of orbitals. So this uh, gives very uh, strong selection. And uh, after having this uh, hopping model, uh, we project onto this uh, J effective equals to three half quartet state using the uh, uh, electron operator for this quartet. Then uh, we can obtain an effective tight binding model in this way. So psi daga u psi. And uh, here we are hiding these complications uh, into this simple form. So this U is a hopping matrix, but uh, because of this very strong selection rule, uh, only special element of U is non-zero. But uh, we can write down this hopping matrix U in very compact way using uh, this product, direct product of power matrices. So along the A direction bond, you have this hopping matrix, and along B direction, you have this hopping matrix, and so on. So this is a compact representation. Uh, but uh, importantly, this because of this hopping, the model is not SU4 invariant yet, of course, because of all this spin orbit coupling and so on. And uh, then we introduce uh, on-site Coulomb reversion, as usual for Hubbard type. So this is our effective Hamiltonian, but the problem is uh, it doesn't look like a SU4 symmetry uh, or even a SU2 symmetry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. So, oops. so this is um, um, 
in the leading approximation, uh, we believe this is valid. But uh, uh, more precisely, there will be some Kunt coupling which differentiates uh, different orbitals. Then, yeah, we get uh, some different effects, uh, which will de lead to explicit breaking of the SU4. Yeah. But uh, we believe that uh, it will be a uh, weaker effect. So this will be the effective Hamiltonian in the leading approximation. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so yeah, at least in simple model, uh, okay, so if we consider distortion of crystal or something, the story is different, but if we assume the perfect uh, Heineken lattice, perfect hexagon, then uh, symmetry dictates most of the matrix element to vanish. So this, these are the only remaining Yeah, uh, at, at least between nearest neighbors. So if you include next nearest neighbor over up there. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. So you mean uh, if we consider this ma main lobe of the DA orbital, it vanishes, but uh, mm -hmm. okay, 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 yeah, okay. How's you are right? Yeah, sorry, yeah, thanks. So okay, so I think in in case there are some other terms, but uh, we believe that uh, this will be leading uh, term in the effective Hamiltonian. And, uh, but a still leading term doesn't look uh, SU4 symmetric or SU2 symmetric. But uh, now what we can do is that uh, we can do kind of gauge transformation. That is, uh, we apply uh, site-dependent SU4 uh, matrix to uh, operators on each site. Then this U is transformed like this. So this is just a usual gauge transformation of a gauge field on the lattice. So this is just SU4 gauge field. And um, the, our statement is that uh, if, you, if we choose this uh, SU4 gauge transformation property, that is by choosing the, this SU4 matrix DJ in appropriate way, actually we can uh, uh, transform this uh, leading term in the effective Hamiltonian to this form uh, with the diagonal, uh, I mean, identity matrix appearing as a uh, coping matrix with just some phase, phase factor here. So if you can make this hopping matrix uh, as diagonal matrix, uh, sorry, uh, identity matrix, then this is perfectly SU4 symmetric. And uh, this Coulomb term is also uh, invariant. Uh, okay, so this Coulomb term is invariant under this kind of transformation. So the effective Hamiltonian is uh, case transformed to this way, which is um, in this order completely SU4 symmetry. Um, so even though the SU4 symmetry is not apparent in the original representation, after case transformation, we recover. SU4 symmetry. And uh, this is a uh, Hubbard model on the Heineken lattice. And uh, actually, the phase factor we find is such that uh, we have pi flux per bracket. And, uh, but uh, anyway, we have uh, SU4 symmetry in this effective model. And, um, it's kind of miracle, but uh, you would ask why this kind of miracle happens. And actually, it's kind of um, uh, 
consequence of the special form of this uh, Hopi matrix. That is because, uh, so now we have this simple expression of Hopi matrix. Each of Hopi matrix is four by four, but uh, each can be written as a direct product of Pauli matrices. And uh, from this representation, we can find that uh, these U matrices, Hopi matrices, obey Majorana-like anti-commutation relation. Although our model has nothing to do with Majorana fermion, but uh, uh, anti-commutation between uh, these Hopi matrices are exactly Majorana-like. So square of each one is identity, and uh, different Hopi matrices anti-commute. So in this kind of situation, uh, for example, if you consider Hanikam lattice model, then uh, elementary bracket uh, has a hexagon loop. And uh, if you consider product of this Hopi matrix along the elementary bracket, that is hexagon, then you consider product of six U matrices. But then you can try to change the order of these Hopi matrices using this anti-commutation relation. And uh, because uh, in hexagon, each type of bond appears twice. A type bond, B type bond, C type bond, each of them appears twice. So eventually you get the UA square times UB square times UC square times some phase factor. And uh, for hexagon, actually, the phase factor turns out to be minus one. But anyway, uh, if you have uh, hopping matrices like this, and uh, if your lattice consists of a uh, uh, loop, which consists of uh, a hop each type of bond even times, then you can always reduce the product of Hopi matrices along any loop to identity matrix times some phase factor. So in this case, uh, you can eliminate uh, non-trivial uh, Hopi matrix and uh, reduce it to the uh, identity matrix. That means that uh, your model actually have as uh, SU4 symmetry. So now we have SU4 symmetric Hubbard model and uh, one electron per side that is quarter filling. And uh, if you go to strong uh, Coulomb limit, uh, large U limit, then you can do a uh, usual uh, perturbation theory in T over U. Uh, if you do that, then in the leading order, you do find uh, this uh, Kugel Komsky model. Uh, at SU4 point. So this is exactly the SU4 symmetric Heisenberg and Dagagan. So in this way, uh, in leading order, starting from very uh, strongly uh, spin orbit coupling uh, limit of zirconium ion, uh, we can derive SU4 Hubbard model. And uh, in the strong uh, Coulomb reparation limit, we can derive uh, SU4 Heisenberg anti net with uh, spins transforming as a fundamental representation of SU4, that is Kuge-Komsky model at SU4 point, as an effective model of this uh, zircon, alpha zirconium core. And uh, so, so this was our derivation. But after our paper, uh, there is also a related paper by Natori, uh, Rodri Operera. Uh, they derived the same effective Hamiltonian using Slightly different uh, starting point, but uh, basically they agree with uh, our derivation. And uh, yeah, let me briefly mention that a similar proposal also appeared before. So this is the paper involving uh, Kugel of Kugel Komsky, uh, yeah, yeah, both Kugel and Komsky. And uh, they also propose that they also propose that uh, SU4 symmetry appears in, uh, I forgot what material they were thinking, but uh, they were concerning this 1D kind of system uh, with uh, uh, this face sharing oct octahedral structure. And, uh, because of this face sharing mechanism, it's natural to have one dimensional chain in this uh, mechanism. So, I don't follow all the details of this paper, but I, in some sense, uh, this mechanism is similar to ours. But uh, in this way, you can realize one D system. But uh, in our mechanism, it's based on uh, edge sharing octahedral structure. So it's 
natural to extend to a two-dimensional system and also a three-dimensional system. So, um, yeah. So in, in 1D, uh, even if you have SU4 dependent hopping, if you have simple chain, you can always uh, eliminate this SU4 dependent hopping using a gauge transformation. But in case of 2D and 3D, whether you can eliminate uh, non-trivial SU4 dependent hopping can by gauge transformation is more non-trivial. But uh, in Honeycomb case, we can. That is what we have shown. And uh, coming back to the 2012 paper by Frederick Mira and his company, um, they studied uh, this uh, SU4 Heisenberg antifeminate on Honeycomb lattice by various methods, mostly numerical. But uh, their conclusion was that uh, they found uh, this power law behavior of correlation function and uh, this gapless behavior of dynamical structure factor. So they concluded that uh, this is a kind of gapless algebraic quantum spinning or quantum spin orbital. Uh, and uh, as I said, this, they were motivated by some experiment on different material, but uh, that material turned out to be non SU4 symmetric. And uh, now we propose that, that these results may apply to this zirconium chloride. And uh, another interesting point is that uh, um, related to this gapless behavior is that uh, application of uh, uh, this deep shoot matrix kind of theorem. So if you consider standard Heisenberg model, SU2, then Honeycomb lattice uh, has two sides per unit cell, as you know. That means that uh, uh, SU2 magnet at zero magnetization corresponds to one half particle per site. But for Honeycomb lattice, uh, per unit cell, you have one particle. So you cannot derive any constraint from leaf shoot matrix type of theorem. But if you consider SU4, it corresponds to one particle, sorry, one quarter particle per site. So even for Honeycomb lattice, you still have fraction number of particle that is one half particle per unit cell. So from leaf shoot matrix kind of argument, you can say that uh, this SU4 antifeminate on Honeycomb lattice must have gapless spectrum or at least degenerate, uh, twice degenerate grounds. So it somewhat protects the gapless nature of the system. And uh, we can generalize this uh, construction to other 3D lattices and so on. So to summarize, uh, we propose a material realization of SU4 Heisenberg antifeminate model with fundamental representation on the Honeycomb lattice. And uh, we propose this alpha zirconium chloride or related materials may be a candidate. And uh, in this mechanism, the strong st st spin orbit coupling leads to bond dependent anisotropic hopping. But uh, by gauge transformation, we can recover SU4 symmetry. And uh, this construction can be generalized to other lattices. And uh, of course, as we have uh, discussed, there are various perturbations which should be present in DR material, which breaks SU4 symmetry. But uh, we believe those are relatively weak. But uh, eventually, we need to analyze the stability of this spin ligate against SU4 breaking perturbations, which is not yet done because uh, we need to first understand uh, this SU4 symmetry point, some effective theory or something. And then uh, we want to discuss the uh, effect of symmetry breaking perturbation against this spin orbital ligate, uh, which would be interesting problem for the future. So thanks for your attention. Thank you for the very nice talk. Are there any questions? Please. So what you showed is the uh, the hoping terms around the plaquette. If yeah. they product to be like right. plus minus one, then yeah. you can choose the. Uh, right. So is it unique to SU four or like is it general to SU n? For example, um, let's say SU two. Well, yeah. So if you have uh, such kind of hoping for SU two, uh, sorry, even for SU n. 
Uh, if your model has um, Hopi matrix which satisfies this kind of relation, then I think we can apply the same argument. Then, for example, in the K-type model, I have a sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z. So if I go around, I get minus one, something like that. Do I have a suit? Oh, if you have tight binding model with such kind of Hopi, yes. But uh, K-type model. Ah, uh, oh, sorry. It's yeah. it's at the yeah. It's fermion hopping. Right, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. But uh, we haven't found, you know such realization for other SUN spins, but in principle possible. So, so in terms of flux, this pi flux, after this mapping, is there any simple way to understand why the appearance of this pi oh, flux? Oh, why it appears? Mm. Uh, you try to, you know, uh, we just evaluated uh, U A U B U C U A U B U C or something, and uh, if you try to change the order, then you 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 have uh, odd number of uh, exchange, so you do get minus sign. That's technical explanation, but uh, physical explanation actually I I don't I don't know. Yeah, but uh, if you go to strong Coulomb limit, this pi flux doesn't matter. You you get the same spin model in the leading. Uh, order, but uh, in the weak coupling regime, the spectrum is very much different. So maybe there is physical way to understand why we should have minus sign, but uh, at this point, I, I don't. Any other questions or comments? Yes. Uh, is there a conserved current also corresponding to this um, local SU4 symmetry? Uh, Will there be a conserved current in the system? Oh, okay. I think, yeah, as long as we have SU4 symmetry, there should be some at least approximately conserved SU4 charge or something. Yeah. But uh, uh, it's kind of. Uh, if you go back to, because we need to this gauge transformation to make SU4 symmetry apparent. Huh. If you go to go back to the original Hamiltonian, this SU4 charge is something uh, mixed. Uh, yeah, mixed or some involved thing. But uh, there should be yeah, approximately conserved charges. Yes. Mm. Okay. If there are no further questions, let's thank the speaker once again. Thank you very much. Move to lunch. <laughs>